Hello students, in this video, we will be talking about the DNA replication of prokaryotes. So what do you mean by DNA replication? First, we need to know about that. It is a fundamental process and it occurs in all living organisms and it is mainly to copy their DNA. And this process is called replication in sense that each strand of double strand DNA serve as template for reproduction of complementary strand. The general features of this process are DNA replication is semi-conservative. It is bidirectional process. It proceeds from a specific point called origin and in prokaryotes, that specific point is called ODC. It proceeds in 5' prime to 3' prime direction. It occurs with high degree of fidelity and it is regulated by multi-enzymes. So it is a multi-enzymatic process. DNA replication occurs by three steps. Initiation, elongation or extension and termination. So this DNA replication, as we are talking about mainly about the DNA replication in prokaryotes, I am just focusing here about the prokaryotic DNA replication. In our next video, we will go through for the eukaryotic DNA replication. So the first step or the first stage of this DNA replication in prokaryotes, it is initiation. Initiation. So DNA replication begins from origin and I told that it is for a prokaryotic organism that origin site is called ODC and it consists of 245 base pair and uh, contains DNA sequences that are highly conserved among bacterial replication origin or in the bacterial genome. So two types of conserved sequences are found at ODC, three repeats of 13 base pair and four or five repeats of 9 base pair and it is and these are called 13 mer and 9 mer respectively. About 20 molecules of DNA A proteins bind with 9 mer repeats along with ATP which causes DNA to wrap around DNA A protein forming initial complex or initiation complex. The DNA and ATP, and ATP trigger the opening of 13 mer repeats forming open complex. So two copies of DNA B proteins helicage in case of um, eukaryote it is called helicage and in case of prokaryote it is called DNA B protein binds to 13 mer repeats and this binding is facilitated by another molecule known as DNA C. So the DNA B and DNA C interaction causes DNA B ring to open which binds with each of the DNA strand. The hydrolysis of bound ATP release DNA C leaving the DNA B bound to the DNA strand. The binding of helicage is key step in replication initiation. DNA B here helicage is indicating DNA B. So DNA B migrates along the single stranded DNA in 5' prime to 3' prime direction causing unwinding of the DNA. That means the degradation of the hydrogen bond in between the nucleotides of the DNA. The activity of helicage causes the topological stress to the unwinded strand forming supercoiled DNA and then this stress is relieved by the DNA topoisomerase or in eukaryotes it is also called DNA guidage by negative supercoiling. Similarly, single stranded binding protein SSB protein binds to the separated strand and prevents re annealing of separated strand and stabilize the strand. 
the DNA polymerase cannot initiate DNA replication. So at first, prime edge synthesize 10 plus minus 1 nucleotide and the, uh, this is RNA in nature along with 5 prime to 3 prime direction. In case of E. coli, primer synthesized by prime edge starts with 3 phosphate AG nucleotide or PPP AG nucleotide and primer is closely associated with DNA B helicase so that it is positioned to make RNA primer as single stranded DNA of lagging strand. So now it is the elongation process. The first stage it was uh, initiation process, the starting process of the DNA replication. Now the extension process of this DNA replication. So here two kinds of strands are mainly formed where parental strands are acting as a template strand and new strands are formed. One strand is called leading strand, another strand is called lagging strand. Now which one is leading strand and which one is lagging strand? Leading strand synthesis is more here in this picture. This is the leading strand. It is a more a straightforward process which begins with the synthesis of RNA primer by prime edge at replication origin. DNA polymerase 3 then adds the nucleotides at 3 prime end. The leading strand synthesis then proceed continuously keeping pace with unwinding of replication fork until it encounters the termination sequence. And here it is written the fork moves as replication takes place. This is the direction. But in case of lagging strand synthesis, this one is for lagging strand. The lagging strand synthesized in short fragments. You can see the short fragments. These are called as Okazaki fragments. At first, RNA primer is synthesized by prime edge and as in leading strand, DNA polymerase 3 binds to RNA primer and adds DNTPs. On this level, the synthesis of each Okazaki fragment seems straightforward, but the reality is quite complex. As I said, the reality is quite complex. So here, mainly I am focusing on the mechanism of lagging strand synthesis. This is the actual phenomenon which actually, uh, which is going through for the formation of this lagging strand. The complexity lies in the coordination of leading and lagging strand synthesis. Here, this, this one is the leading strand and here it is the lagging strand. So you can see, you can imagine the complexity which mainly formed here for the formation of this lagging strand. Why it happens? Because DNA polymerase can act to five from five prime to three prime direction only, and you all know that DNA strands these are anti-parallel strands. So both the strands are synthesized by a DNA polymerase single DNA polymerase three dimer, which accomplished the looping. See the loop which mainly formed here, looping of template DNA of lagging strand synthesizing Okazaki fragments. Helicage P, sorry, helicage or DNA P, which is also called as DNA P, and prime edge or this is also called as DNA G, constitute a functional unit within replication complex called primosome. Here you can see DNA prime edge and DNA helicage. DNA prime edge means DNA G and DNA helicage means DNA B. So DNA polymerase 3 use one set of core subunit to synthesize leading strand and other set 
of core subunit to synthesize lagging strand. So here, here you can see DNA polymerase 3, one unit is using, one core subunit is using for the formation of this DNA uh, leading strand and another, see here, the another set of subunit of this DNA polymerase 3 is using for the formation of this lagging strand. So in elongation step, helicage in front of prime edge and polymerase 3 unwind the DNA at the replication fork and travel along lagging strand template along 5 prime to 3 prime direction. DNA G prime edge occasionally associated with DNA B helicage synthesizes short RNA primer. A new B sliding clamp is then positioned at the primer by B clamp loading complex of DNA polymerase 3. When the Okazaki fragments synthesize or synthesis is completed, the replication halted and the core subunit dissociates from their sliding clamps and associates with new clamp. And this initiates the synthesis of new Okazaki fragments. Both leading and lagging strand are synthesized coordinately and simultaneously by a complex protein moving in 5 prime to 3 prime direction. In this way, both leading and lagging strand can be replicated at same time by a complex protein that move in same direction. That means from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. Every so often the lagging strands must dissociate from the replicosome and reposition itself so that replication can continue. Lagging strand synthesis is not complete until the RNA primer has been removed and the gap between these Okazaki fragments are sealed. The RNA primer are removed by exonuclease enzyme or exonuclease activity of DNA polymerase 1 and replaced by DNA and the gap is then sealed by DNA ligage using NAD as cofactor. Termination process eventually as you all know the circular DNA is mainly there for the prokaryotes or as we are mainly talking here about the bacterial DNA replication because bacteria is the main representative of this prokaryotic prokaryotic organism. So bacterial DNA it is a circular DNA. So here it is drawn in such way. So eventually the two replication fork of circular E. coli or Escherichia coli chromosome meet at termination recognizing sequences that is known as TAR. The TAR sequence of 23 base pair are arranged on the chromosome to create trap that the replication fork can enter but cannot leave. TAR sequence function as binding sites for TUS protein, T-U-S TUS protein. So here is the origin site and here it's mainly and in this point it's moving bidirectionally so tar task complex can arrest the replication fork from only one direction tar task complex encountered first with either of the replication fork and halted the other opposing replication fork halted when it collided with the first one this seems that tar tus sequences is not essential for termination but it may prevent over replication by one fork if other is delayed or halted by a damage or some obstacle. When either of the fork encounter tar tus replication, replication halted. So in E. coli, DNA topoisomerase 4 type 2 cut the two strands 
of one circular DNA and segregate each of the circular DNA and finally join the strand. So the DNA finally transfer to daughter bacterial cell or prokaryotic cell. So this is about the DNA replication process. This is the summary which I have discussed here the DNA replication process in eukaryotes. This is the general view showing the replication process and uh, to know about the complexity which we can face for the lagging strand formation. So this picture is mainly exposing, is mainly re re revealing about that particular phenomena which is uh, going for the formation of this lagging strand with the help of DNA polymerase 3, 2 core subunits and that is the actual uh, DNA uh, structure for the prokaryotic organism where tar tas complex finally eliminate or sorry finally terminate the replication process and uh, this way replication process in eukaryotes it's finally done. So this is about the DNA replication in prokaryotes. Hope you like the video. If you like the video please share and subscribe my channel and thank you.